Um, so next, I just want to talk a little bit more about uh, sequences. Um, we saw that um, we say that a sub n converges to L if uh, for all epsilon there exists a capital N so that uh, a sub n minus L is less than epsilon. In other words, the sequence and the limit get arbitrarily close together um, when little n is sufficiently large. So whenever little n is greater than or equal to that cutoff capital N. Okay, so that's the, the definition, the what I'll say the, I always want to call it the epsilon delta definition, even though there's no deltas, but the epsilon n definition. Um, uh, maybe I'll just call it the epsilon definition of a, of a limit for a sequence. And again, remember that this is the same as the definition for uh, functions going to infinity. Okay, it's no different. Um, now, if no such L exists, okay, so if no such L uh, exists, uh, then we say that the sequence a sub n, um, so that's said to diverge. And there's really um, two types of divergence that I just want to emphasize. So for example, if we were to have uh, e to the i n, as n goes from zero to infinity, um, this is going to diverge, not because it goes to infinity, but because it doesn't settle down at any one particular value. This is kind of like, I mean, this basically is sine of n, um, if you were to have a function that's, you know, oscillating up and down, back and forth, but never settling at, a, at any particular value. Here, um, we can think of this as uh, being a value on the unit circle. And then we have um, the n equals zero term. n equals one is going to be at one radian. Um, and then uh, two radians, three radians. Remember that um, at the point antipodal from where we started, that's at pi radians, so that's a little bit more than three. Um, and then uh, four, uh, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and so on. And it's never settling down. It's never going to get um, close to the origin, uh, nothing. It's not settling. It's not doing anything. So this is a divergent sequence because it just doesn't have a limit. Um, alternatively, you could have something like uh, 2 plus i to the n, um, again, as n goes from, say, 0 to infinity. Sorry to always start at 0. It doesn't really matter where you start, but this also diverges. And I forgot to say that this diverges. I said it. I just didn't write it. I mean, um, so the second sequence also diverges, but this diverges actually because um, it, it goes to infinity. Is little n gets bigger and bigger and bigger, this is going to live on an ever-expanding circle centered at the origin. Uh, and so, um, you know, it's going to be when n is zero, it's going to be on a circle of radius one. When n is one, it's going to be on a circle of radius uh, square to five. When n is two, it'll be on a circle of radius five and so on. And so this is going to diverge to infinity. And you, you don't really need to specify that this diverges to infinity, or if it just diverges, it doesn't really matter. Uh, but in, in both of these cases, here's examples where sequence, uh, a sequence diverges. So that's all fine. The next thing to talk about are limit laws. Okay, so the rules that limits follow. Um, so let's suppose that there's going to be two ways that I'll write this, and I'll kind of emphasize why I like this arrow notation here. But let's suppose that uh, the sequence a sub n converges to L and b sub n converges to say M, then um, the sum of the sequences and the difference of the sequences converge to the sum and the difference of the limits. So a sub n plus b sub n uh, is going to converge to L plus N. The same is true with the minus. I'm just going to make that a plus or minus. And I think this is just easier if you say A sub N plus or minus B sub N converges to L plus or minus M. Okay, so that's one rule. Um, the next rule is that the product of the sequences converges to the product of the limits. Um, the, uh, what else? The ratio of the sequences converges to the ratio of the limits, assuming that we're not dividing by zero. So as long as 
m is not equal to zero and uh, b sub n is not equal to, to zero uh, for all n. Uh, and then finally, um, if f is continuous on the complex plane, then f of a sub n is going to be a new sequence, and that'll converge to f of l. Okay, so the uh, limit of the the limit of f of a sub n is going to be f of uh, the limit of a sub n. In other words, you, you can move the function in and out of the limit, uh, if that makes sense. So uh, so if f is continuous, then you can do that. In fact, f doesn't need to be continuous everywhere. It just really needs to be continuous over some set that contains uh, a sub n and l, Okay, where l is some uh, accumulation point of the sequence a sub n. So uh, you, know, you, can, you can get away with a little bit less, but what I said is true. If f is continuous, then, uh, then we get that. Okay, and so these are really all of the, the properties that we want. The proofs are going to be identical to what we did when we talked about limits. Um, I guess there's one more thing I could add. This is not really necessary that we add it, but if you have a constant, so a complex constant times C, then this is going to converge to that complex constant C times L. Uh, where again, L is that complex number that's our limit for the sequence. Okay, so that's kind of a I think that really is a, a special case of rule two, but if you want to write that separately, that's fine. I'm not going to walk through the proofs here uh, because the proofs are going to be identical to what happened when we were talking about functions going to infinity. Okay, and so some of the proofs are already in the book, some are not, uh, but these are, are pretty readily available. I'd actually encourage you to try to do them yourself. So just to give you an idea for number two, so this is just a sketch. Uh, for number two, but just notice that a sub n, b sub n minus ln is equal to a sub n, b sub n minus b sub n l plus b sub n l minus lm. And then by the triangle inequality, this is going to be less than the sequence b sub n times a sub n minus l plus uh, the modulus of l times the modulus of b sub n minus m. Okay, so that's a, a very quick sketch for number two, but that gives you the idea, right? So you can add and subtract in the right terms, uh, apply the triangle inequality. You have to be a little bit careful. Um, since B sub n converges, it's going to be bounded, right? For reasons that we've talked about, L is again um, bounded. It's a complex number. It doesn't matter. Um, anyways, so I'll let you fill in all the details there that you want, but those are the limit laws that we have. Okay, so all the usual laws for limits apply.